Okay, that was weird, but hey, we're back, so, you know. That didn't take very long while we were gone, really. I hope I don't get murdered again. Well, Welcome back, <laughs> party people, to another edition of The First Cut, an episodic journey through the sonic underground of today. Now put the kids down for a nap, open up a bottle of the good stuff, and sit tight, because it's about to get weird. back party people of the world it's been a while been quite a while actually uh you're here with uh danny and evan on the first cut evan how you doing buddy it's been about, hey. been about a year yeah yeah crazy Hell yeah this uh this pandemic couldn't take us down but uh you know it sure did try you're here with episode 41 excuse me of the first cut and let's wait the 41th no time. episode already you know what Whew. Okay, let's waste no time getting into Dark Ambient 3 with our artist Stonejaw, Morning Among Ashes and Flowers. Evan, how you been, man? Um, you know, I've been swell. Um, You've been swelling? I've, I, well, now I'm going to start swelling after this little fucking fun drink you gave don't, me. Don't, don't say the name. Don't say the name. Uh, I'd say, I don't even remember okay. the name. It's just okay, some kind on. of salty drink. Yeah. And it's not a, it's not a michelada. It's not a um, mm. Bloody Mary or anything like that. It's tasty, but anyways, I'm I'm uh, doing okay. That's good. You know, just kicking get, it with the I fan band and all that. Swelling. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, we promised that today coming back would be a drinking episode, and because we are not liars, we are here with uh. Well, you know, you know what we put in our gullets. We don't need to tell you. You know what it is if you watch this podcast for long enough, and I doubt you have, but maybe, maybe you have. Good old WW whiskey. WW whiskey. Um, we'll go ahead and get a little ceremonial start. Ch- uh, cheers. Down I guess. the yeah. Close, up, bottoms thing. up. Yeah. Smooth but still whiskey, as Evan likes to say. Mm. Yeah, that is some good shit, though. Mm-hmm. I would definitely write home about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, today's drinking game rule is every time we say the phrase, that reminds me of, which also includes, you know, that reminds me of. So we are going to try and not say that. I would say anything that is very similar is fair game, though. So you're like, you know what that makes me think of? That's fine. But that reminds me of is uh, it's a drink, and we're going to hold each other accountable. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, shit. This bottle's getting low. I didn't even think about that. I may have to stop midway to get something else. So we're here with Dark Ambient. Um, I usually like to do these right around Halloween, but uh, we weren't here for Halloween. Yeah. Evan, you want to talk about Dark Ambient and what you think of it and what you don't think of it? Yeah, I think Dark Ambient is sick. Oh, yeah. Man. Um, I don't really know what what to say about Dark Ambient uh, that's totally novel or, or that's incredibly interesting. But yeah, I after mean, talking about it three times, yeah, um, I, I think there's you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to plunge into, a lot of potential uh, out there because you know um, uh, you know it's like when you start to scratch the surface of Dark Ambient and you start to kind of hit the um, the you know the usual suspects yeah um you know it's like okay i know what it sounds like i know what it is but i mean you can really dig deep it's really an iceberg and um definitely like this what we're listening to and listening to right now is like yeah you know it definitely fits like dark ambient moniker but it's it also has like a noise aspect to it yeah it's and, a little more busy than dark ambient and it's got like is. a synth pad and it's clearly like going for like um that droning sound but also a little bit of like power to it almost like power ambient yeah and so you know it's funny i I was thinking the other day i was talking as i do and uh i was telling someone as i do that um really trying to explain what dark ambient was like in a, a fairly succinct put a little bow on it 
Um, and uh, I said, well, you know, ambient, not dark ambient, ambient is kind of music that is really made more to create an atmosphere and pretty much exclusively an atmosphere of, uh, which granted, I know a lot of people would argue right away because ambient is actually a very, very vague term uh, in the musical sense, but ambient is typically more created as an atmospheric way to create a sense of calm and, um, and kind of ease. Whereas dark ambient is the exact opposite of that. It is atmosphere that is designed to create unease, that is designed to create suspense. But yeah, I mean, that being said, though, I, I, I love dark ambient music. Oh, I, I tend to, I, I mean, I don't go for ambient music at large. I tend to, I, I mean, I, I am a singer songwriter kind of guy. I like the, uh, I like the old vocals and I like the arrangements. You know, I like my band sounds, but. But, you know, if I'm going to sit down and enjoy myself some ambient, it's going to be darker, I think. Because I think that's, like, one that's of the beautiful things that dark ambient can do is it kind of, like, like this right now, like, it it just, it, it's so gritty and kind of um, grungy. It just, it gives you that sense of, like, I don't know, it lets your mind kind of sprout ideas and makes you kind of, like, realize that it's, like, this is kind of... I mean, I guess not getting too pretentious here, but you know, it kind of reminds me of. Uh, oh shit! It kind of reminds me of. Did that count? I'm gonna count it. Oh. Gosh. I wish I didn't, but yeah. I'll count it. This is really early on. Oh Jesus. <sighs> okay. Okay. Well, let's try to avoid doing that shit too much. Very smooth. There's one for you guys at home. Oh, so smooth and delicious. But um, I would... Okay, I'm going to try to avoid that phrase. Yeah, please um, do. I... These are big shots, too. These are tall boys. Yeah. Oh, crap. Um, I, I like anything that makes me think of um, the futility of human life. <laughs> this yeah. is what is kind of makes me veer towards in my in my mind it's like i I, um hopefully people out there are are familiar with um uh some of these artists so um uh, kg kg haino who's a japanese artist from uh, sort of got his start in the 70s and 80s and he sort of a pioneer of like um dark ambient noise experimental avant-garde um acoustic electronic um uh that, that kind of music um, and he works a lot with uh, Mertz Bow and um, and uh, Stephen O'Malley from Sun. And um, God, I love Sun. I have a record of theirs uh, that they put out a handful of years ago. That, of uh, KG Haino. He actually mm-hmm. they did a live recording at uh, Super Deluxe in Tokyo. I really with, should have grabbed different shot glasses. I'm already oh, fucking yeah. swimming. Oh. With Orin Barchi <clears throat> and uh, Stephen O'Malley and. Uh, it actually kind of is, is very similar to this in, in a lot of ways, but um, KG Haino plays uh, the Hurdy Gurdy, mm. and he plays it like through a distortion pedal, so it sounds fucking wicked. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the other folks just do their things. And uh, yeah, like I was just just feeling it. Like, oh, that's the thing with Dark Ambient for me. It just like, it just washes over my body yeah. and makes me just feel. And I, I, you know, typical ambient doesn't really hit me that way. Like, I think like my big thing with ambient music at large, and not just not just dark ambient, but definitely particularly in the case of dark ambient, is I find I find a ton of inspiration from dark ambient. Actually, maybe more than really any other kind of music. But the big thing is, is that I either have to listen to ambient music uh ultra passively or like ultra actively so either like oh i'm trying to sleep and it's like like background to help me relax and fall asleep or i'm meditating and i am focusing like exclusively on drone tones Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um 
So, by the way, you know what I mean was almost today's phrase, and uh, I'm really fucking glad we didn't do that. But uh, um, I like to kind of like lie in bed, um, like um, supinated, like, you know, hands on my chest kind of thing, and just like meditate and just focus on dark ambient and just kind of pull try to pull like raw emotion if i can and that that can be incredibly inspiring for me not necessarily in my like rock oriented music but in the noise oriented music that i write it helps me think of like like atmospheres and ideas and raw emotions because i'm trying to actually create something well i mean i'm trying to create two albums realistically one um kind of as myself as a a prog rock rooted guy and the other as um more of an experimental like rhythmic noise kind of idea Mm -hmm. i mean you know that i'm i'm saying this just kind of out in the open but um what the fuck is happening hang on Give us just a minute. We're having technical difficulties. Okay, that was weird, but hey, we're back, so, you know. That didn't take very long while we were gone, really. I hope I don't get murdered again. That seems like a good setup for yeah, me to get no, fucking murdered um, again. I would love to, but <laughs> I just... I, don't I need to work on my um, my chops, I think. Before of I, getting murdered? Yeah, Before yeah, I get yeah, murdered that again. Pretty I need fun. to work on my getting murdered. No, I mean, um, I've thought about doing that in, like, future iterations. Just, like, fun Halloween episodes of, like, uh, either you or I or both of us get killed. And just, like, it'd be really funny. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it'll be, um, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, dark, yeah, dark ambient. Um, I would say... This artist in particular is a little more busy than most dark ambient that I hear, um, but that's fine. That's, yes, that's fine. I love the like field noise shit. Like, yeah, that, that gets dude. me really good. I I actually really really enjoy this album. This song in particular, which is titled "Nearing the Shore," uh, where we will be reborn, um, because there's a lot of like really kind of. Um, Creepy. Well, field noise is, is, as you said. Um, God, I just, I love it. It's so good. Yeah. It's so evocative. But, um, yeah, man. So, Evan, it has been, actually, I believe just over one calendar year. Um, there's so many holidays and events that we were not here to cover. Um, the moon landing, um, Mm, mm -hmm. the, uh, the sovereignty is the United States as a, you know, its own, own independent country free of English, England's grasp. That was pretty crazy. Um, I had my first, um, kidney stone. Ooh. That's not true. Oh, good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm really glad it's not true, actually. I got a bidet, I mean, in that world, that's kind of cool. Or a uh, bidet attachment. Um, a Tushy brand bidet attachment. Um, I'm not saying that Tushy Sponsor sponsors us because they yeah. don't, but, like, maybe you should because I have your product. I'd gladly talk about your product. And I have the, like, upgraded one that actually gets, like, warm. Oh, it's so nice. Never felt fresher down there, you know what I mean? Interesting. Yeah. I strongly recommend you use it. I don't really want you to shit in my apartment, but like shit in my apartment. <laughs> well, shit in my cat's litter box. Oh, we have a cat. That's a thing now. No, yeah, there's a cat. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. Let's see. Tap tap tap. Glass glass glass. Um, holidays happen. All of them. Literally all Thanksgiving, of them. Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas, by Halloween. the way. Halloween. All the rest. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That's April a good one. Fools. Um, I'm pregnant. Haha, <laughs> got you, April Fools. But, um, <laughs> you like that one? April Fools. I'm pregnant. Haha, <laughs> got you. Chelsea's <laughs> mom's birthday is April Fools' Day. Isn't that crazy? Huh. And that's actually not a lie or a prank, which it very easily could have been because it's April Fools'. But, um, interesting. 
Imagine the setup if her mom was like pregnant and then was like, oh God, I'm going into labor. Goes to the hospital. And then on April 1st, it's like, oh, I had a newborn girl or whatever. And she's like holding somebody else's kid. Ooh. And then, um, which, you know, granted, this is like, you know, several decades ago, but like, obviously, if it weren't saying like today, somebody does that and they like text their partner who's, I don't know, out of town on fucking business, I'm assuming. And, um, and text their partner and he's like oh i wish i could have been there and she's like jk april fools this is somebody's baby i stole ha yeah, yeah. that would be funny mm-hmm. indeed mm. wow we're um this is it's good right this is like what well, is going on here it's in my to ears become, like industrial yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. definitely yeah we're getting um, more into the music Concrete. Oh, I love it. I mean, granted, yes, it is becoming less directly dark ambient and more like experimental noise, industrial. But well, I think the best thing that dark ambient can do is, is like paint a picture, set yes. up a little tableau in your head, you know? Right, right. I think that's why so many people find it conducive to creativity is it, you know, it lets you um, really set a stage in the, uh, in the, the, um, sphere of the mind you know what's funny is um i find like i love dark ambient don't get me wrong but i certainly wouldn't say it's my favorite genre by any means no but i find that like artists that are just adjacent to dark ambient are the ones where i'm like oh my god that shit is so good like author and punisher yeah remember uh, that music video fucking like terror bird Yes. That shit is just where it's like it's got a lot of like dark ambient themes, but it's more like experimental, um, kind of industrial. Man, that shit's just so fucking good. Yeah. But I do love dark ambient. Oh yeah. Shout out to Santa Obra. You know, soon, soon, two things we are going to be doing soon. We are going to be doing a an ambient list, not just a dark ambient list, because that'll be the first time we've done ambient. And. Um, we're going to do episodes going over the first, I don't know, what, five or six episodes we did where we mm. weren't actually listening to music. I don't know if we really ever got into that, but there's a thing where, well, if we want to get fully, fully into it, I used to do um, Let's Play videos, and I found that I had fun with them, but like, I was never really passionate about it as much as I was just doing it and I went under the moniker Danny VNCR which is what I am on Instagram go follow me on Instagram wink wink um and the thing is that like I, we started doing this podcast and I started posting everything to YouTube and I know knew full well because of doing my uh let's play shit that if we had other people's music in the podcast that it would like immediately get taken down and this was at a point where youtube was not super stringent on who could make money on their channels so i i had my videos monetizable which i couldn't possibly now um sorry i'm kind of going on a rant but uh um i well i should say we decided not to include music in the podcast to avoid that happening and we used um oh i'm gonna feel really bad about not knowing the name of the artist who made it but we used a an artist's like free for commercial use licensed song uh for like the background while we would talk about artists and then we'd be like oh i know you can't hear this but you know it makes me think of this and shit and um for the first like five six seven episodes or so like we had done this and eventually even that background music had been like copywritten and i realized like what is the fucking point of making this shit and not playing the goddamn music because it's like oh you'll just have to trust us this is really good if you could hear it you would really like it maybe you look it up i don't know it, it just didn't make any fucking sense. And it made way more sense to say, look, we're just never gonna make fucking money off this podcast. 
um, it would just be better to play it with the music. And so that's what we did. Indeed. And that's what we are doing. But the first however many fucking podcasts, we didn't listen to music. So I really like to go back. And for that matter, we weren't as adept at uh, researching artists as we are now. So I would really like to go back and listen to those artists where we can be like, hey, you remember how we said these are really good? Well, check the shit out now where you can actually hear it. And speaking of dark ambient, dark ambient, oh my God. Holy shit. Oh my God. Dark ambient in particular, we had featured um, Santa Obruent, who I've mentioned many, many times on this podcast because uh, he saw our original podcast, or I, I should say he... I'm pretty sure it's a he, um, but I never really got to know them as a person, but I'm pretty sure it's a he. Um, we got to kind of know them afterwards because, like, man, that's a cool thing you do, and we talked, and um, it was really cool. We got to know them. Yeah. By the way, it would be super cool to meet in person someday uh, if we go over uh, a little bit east, over the moat, as it were. Totally love to meet up for drinks sometime, just saying, wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, First drink, first rounds on me. I'll say that. And granted, I'm not just saying that because I'm slightly tipsy, but yeah. uh, that's probably not hurting either. Um, what was I saying? What were the other artists we featured? Melano Helios and Auberge. And they were all really good. And granted, all of the fucking artists that we featured from all of the lists. There was prog rock. There was synth pop. There was uh, folk, jazz. I think that was it. Oh no, and I did I did melodic death metal back when this was just a me podcast and not an us podcast. Yeah. But uh yeah, I can't wait to get back into that. That'll be super cool to talk about all those artists again. So if you haven't subscribed yet, like, subscribe, all that shit. God knows we could use it. Um and uh, you know, it's fun. It's a good thing we do. And uh you'll get to hear all those episodes. That'll be real cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. That being Excited. said, I can't feel my teeth. Evan, do you want to move on to the next artist? Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. I feel I feel satiated with. I do too. Um, st- uh, Stone Jaw. Stone Jaw, yeah. baby. Good work. Uh, Thank you, folks, or you know, Mucho. whomever is behind the production. Yeah. Good. Good work. All the way over in Connecticut. On with the next pick. And we're back with our next pick. Our next pick is Indigo Symbol with the album Arc of Night, and we are going to start with the track Descent. Now, I will say, first and foremost, before we get into this one, this is what I would consider to be um, kind of a safe pick. And I don't say that to mean that it's bad. I just mean like... When you think of Dark Ambient, this is the kind of shit that, like, immediately pops to mind. It's... I I don't want to say simple, because simple is reductive, but it's, like, it's very, like... It's it's maybe more, like, uh, like, um, uh, affecting uh, field sounds or something. So this kind of has that sense of, like... Which is super fun to do if you've Of, like, industrial noise, but just, like, kind of slowed down and chopped and screwed or what have you. And this one kind of wavers a little bit between dark ambient and ambient a little bit. So there's times where you'd be like, ugh, and then there's times where you'd be like, oh, well, that's quite lovely. And dark ambient isn't really supposed to induce the latter yeah um you will also find too that if you look at this page as we are showing it to you or just you know do a little bit of your own research that this is actually under a label called earth mantra and earth mantra is based out of boston mass i believe it had said and it is a collective of ambient producers who make music like this with the sole purpose of uh, bringing pay what you want. I, I really struggle with not saying free because, like, let's be honest, when you see pay what you want, name your price, you're like, oh, free, unless I decide I like it and then I'll just support the artist otherwise. Um, but that's a really mm. shitty way to look at it. Um, and I'm trying not to do that because I want to support these artists as much as humanly possible. And when saying it's free, it means like, oh, you're going to get a, well, I should say 
sorry, I'm kind of getting away from myself, but I know that Bandcamp kind of has this, um, well, not kind of, it does have the, um, when you put up an album and you say, I want it to be name your price, they say, well, you get 200 free downloads. And after that, once those 200 have expired, you have to buy more for people to be able to keep getting it for free. Because when you sell an album, Bandcamp says we're going to take X amount of percentage off. So to use their website, you have to be paying them in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So I hate saying, or let me rephrase, I need, I'm going to try and stop saying the album is free uh, because it's not ideal to just take it instead of not buy it when yeah. the artist I mean, there's actually has real to work pay for going it. into every element Absolutely. of it uh, not just the work itself but the the um but just like yeah the hosting of it on on the site and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah they everyone deserves a little bit of a little bit of dough for their yeah. for their work so yeah i feel that yeah so that being said uh while this is what I would consider a safe pick because it like really exactly fits the bill. Um, it is still very lovely. Like it's very yeah. nice. It does. I mean, I'm getting the hell of space brain from this picture. Oh, yeah. uh, this, the space brain stuff lately has been hurting me. Like I feel like, um, a little, a cosmic, fucking chimpanzee who's just like staring with his stupid mouth open like staring at the <laughs> like a fucking Milky Way bonobo <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah no I mean I I love uh, I love this kind of imagery like anything that that's like uh, you're talking uh, about the album art but oh yeah okay. yeah I mean it's just gives me chills I can't feel my toes anymore you know what I mean <laughs> I can't feel a lot of things I, yeah. I dude I don't remember when it like I haven't drank in so fucking long that I'm like oh I've had like I mean granted when I say that I've had two shots of whiskey these these are like three inch shot glasses so it's really more like four shots but I uh yeah it's interesting I'm really feeling it and I shouldn't be like it should take a whole whole lot more for me to uh, yeah that's why I'm, I'm really trying like to uh, really trying to be extremely cautious with my words because I don't want to fall into that uh, into the trap of saying yeah. the godforsaken phrase me too but uh, yes the the work is um is yeah as you say it's it's uh, um, a little bit more down the the uh trodden path the pipeline of, of what you would expect from like something that is dark ambient yeah like but, uh, I, I had mentioned dark ambient is very often meditative to me i think this is exactly that if you're like oh i want to go down like a dark ambient meditative path boom this is a this is a great pick for that and you know it's interesting to me because i think that dark ambient kind of uh fits the aesthetic of of um like cosmology or space brain or or um uh, just like staring at the night sky i think it fits that really well it lends itself nicely because Definitely. because it's like you know when i think of the universe and i think of its um infinite uh expanse and its unfathomable um distance and and depths i I kind of have that feeling of th that, like dark ambient can can give you that uh, that sense of being completely insignificant, like nothing, yeah, nothingness that's floating on a ball of nothing for no reason. What was that, David Firth line? The uh, oh yeah, never forget that you're uh, yeah you're, you're a um, bit of something on something else. Yeah, you're a bit of something on on a bit of something else. Um, well, I love what was it? It was like uh, the whole line was like you might be the most important brick in the least important wall. It's pretty you might much be a grain of piss dried onto the queen's. God, toilet. David Firth, that, that that cat is a genius. Oh, you I know, love his content so much. Yeah, if we can if we can start just like putting together a big fat list of uh of people i would love to um just shoot the shit with and you know bring on the goddamn show you know here's here's my Ugh. my only issue with saying i would love to meet and sit down with david firth right you ready this is the only thing i don't think the conversation that we could have could possibly be long enough 
Yeah, maybe so. Like, granted, taking a mind-altering drug that would draw the conversation out by hours is really, like, the only way I could be like, yeah, that was that was um, an absorptive session. But, I mean, ultimately, it'd be more like, I want to hang out for, like, a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And be like, let's get together, like, every, I don't know, every night or every other night or roughly, like, let's say, you know, like, three to five nights out of, like, an entire week. Yeah. Because that that's the thing is, like, if you said, like, I want to have an interview with David Firth, mm. you're going to get some good answers, probably. But I think at the end of the day, when you find yourself going home, you've packed down all of your stuff. And you're like, all right, cool. That was a good trip to England. Blah, 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 blah. I got to meet and have an interview with David Firth that lasted, I don't know, three hours. So let's Actually, let's be really fucking really open-minded and say you had lunch and then an interview and then you hung out a little bit and then you went home so it was like five six hours Mm. i promise you he's the kind of person that when you get home you're going to come up with a thousand more questions that you would wish that you had asked yeah you know what i mean oh yeah and that's that's the only issue that I have is that like I, I would want to hang out enough that I'd be like I got to legitimately know you as a human being. Yeah. And not just like, oh, I got to ask you a few inspirations about a thing that you did. Yeah. I, I think he's yeah, yeah, he's a he's a real visionary. I, I think that his um it's it's good was, I guess wait, that hang we hang on. What was our rule? Uh, our our rule is um, the drinking rule. Uh, yeah, it's um, this, this that reminds me of. Okay, okay. I had to I had to turn off the the rule for a second there so that I could even just say it. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Dreading no, no, no. It right I mean, yeah, point. that was that was directly relative to my question, so certainly that does not count. But I was thinking, I was like, well, that makes me think, and I'm like, that's not the same. Okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Um. Yes. Anyways, as you were. Well, yeah, uh, David Firth. I think uh, his contribution to just the general um, zeitgeist or of uh, like, um, horror, if you, I guess if you want to say it, not really horror themed, but but uh, so, um, uh, psychological or um, maybe. Uh, trying to think of like the the right word for it it's just like I know a, what you mean yeah uh, uh, um phantasmagoria i feel like, like um i i feel like it's uh i think the term that i had heard was like it, it was used in reference to like genji ito junji ito mm-hmm. are you mm-hmm. familiar with you're very familiar with junji ito i mean i'm familiar enough i, I don't that i i think the term was used was like spatial horror mm. where the idea was that it is horrifying but it's not it's not immediately horrifying because when you think of horror you think of like a character right if you think of like uh let's say friday the 13th you think why is friday the 13th scary it's scary because of jason Voorhees. because if you go anywhere near camp crystal lake or wherever the fuck else he is depending on the movie then he'll kill you and that's scary that's horrifying but what's kind of funny i guess this is to me because i'm totally biased is that when i think of that i'm like great that's cool and then i can turn it off because it's a movie and i go yeah but jason Voorhees isn't fucking real Mm. so once i'm able to connect those dots i'm like oh that's not scary but spatial horror is more that what you're afraid of is an idea so mm. Junji Ito uses horror where like the quote unquote villain is not a person, but it's an idea. So like a big one of his works was like Uzumaki was that like um, everybody be, was becoming obsessed with spirals and spirals were just appearing out of nowhere to where you could just be like going through your life in a fucking like big tunneling spiral would appear like right in the middle of your fucking head turning your head into fucking shit pudding where it like remained and it's just like oh well i'm fucking dead and it's it's stuff like that where it's it's not a villain 
uh, per se. It's not a tangible thing that you can say that, that is what I need to worry about. It's an idea at large. It's a cloud. It's uh, ethereal, ephemeral, all sorts of other E-related <laughs> words. Um, but um, that's yeah. what I think David Firth kind of like really conveys a lot in his videos. And one of the more simple videos that he did that I actually think is quite beautiful and underrated is um, the video entitled The Child That Smell Odd, which I'm sure you must have seen 500 fucking times if you've seen it once. Because I've certainly watched it a lot, and I know you and I used to live together, which means you've seen it a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that, that one, I would say, is that, but in such a very digestible way, in where, like, the concept was, like, what if we just took everything that was offensive and obstructive and immediately said, oh, that's a problem in one way, shape, or form to somebody? Fucking get rid of it. Nobody gets that anymore. To the point where nobody would be offensive. Nothing would be obstructive or obtusive. Obtuse. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it, it gets to the point where they're like, well, let's let's just we, we don't even have the equipment to monitor what's going on in the world anymore. Let's just imagine the change in the world. And I remember there's there's one line in that that video that while, like I said, that video is like really simple in its message. The one line like still fucking haunts me to this day. And that was um, the dude sits in front of his fridge. Right. And he's like. Uh, in light of my material possessions, I was given this book of suggestions, essentially like ideas of things to think about. And it's like, and one of the suggestions I quite like is uh, remembering all of the different shades of gray that I've seen in my life. But then the line that actually fucks with me is he says, sometimes I like to sit in front of my open fridge and the vague droning humming sound reminds me of something that we used to have called music mm -hmm. and it's just like oh man <laughs> that fits that definitely thematically fits the episode so that's yeah. cool that that comes full circle here right but i just i love and of course you know fridge tones is a thing that you've talked about a lot before or what, yeah. what is the term fridge um fridge logic well yeah i mean that's that's quite different in what that means yes. necessarily but but um yes absolutely but uh while i feel that that video not to cut you off while i feel that that video is like very very basic and it, it's kind of almost like ham-handed in its way of saying like here's the fucking point get it in comparison to the rest of his videos I do think that it does a phenomenal job of like portraying like the the sometimes you've just gotta kinda of fucking accept that that's what reality is yeah absolutely I think yeah I think he's pretty genius at, at creating oh, yeah. these types of characters that, that are just like that the hardest thing that they can do is just cope with the um the absurdity of mm -hmm. life yep. and um and i think one of my favorite firth characters was uh from um the i think it was the third health reminder where he's uh, sure. uh mad as a swan oh thing. yeah 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 and so there's the guy who's <laughs> he's talking to well, this i've been trying to grow my own apricot tree yeah, yeah. <laughs> well so he's talking to the, to the shrink you know to the doctor mm -hmm. and and um <laughs> he's like he's like well what do you expect will happen to you he's like yeah, oh well i, I expect this. that someone's gonna approach me on the street and give me loads of money and reunite me with all my uh all my old friends and uh, i'm gonna have a, a girlfriend and, and transport me back to a time in my yeah, life when i was me happy to carefree time. yeah absolutely and uh and the shrink goes you know mr doctor man goes uh goes well if you expect this to happen, then why are you so so depressed? Well, because I'm impatient. I want it now. Yep. It's like that's that's just it's like so hits indicative. the nail on the head of oh, like yeah. how we are as a people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We just all dream of our own good fortune, but we're so fucking impatient that Yeah, like, and I mean and that's that's the big thing too, is not only that, but like in in today's standards, like people people want and want and want, but they have no desire to work for something you know what i mean yeah. and granted i'm not work saying for something that or or accept that that it's th infeasible that it's infeasible you yeah. need to come to terms with just the 
just the, the way life yeah. crumbles. Well, and I mean, <laughs> it, it's funny too, right? Because I say this, and I know somebody's going to hear this and go, <gasps> how dare he say that? Because that's me. I promise I'm not talking about you specifically. But the thing is, is and it's funny too, because there's two sides to that, yeah? There's people who are like, I actually don't really want a lot. I really, I just want, you know, this, 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 or this, or whatever. And I don't feel like I'm asking for much, and they're not. But they don't want to do anything to get there. There's that. And granted, of course, I'm not saying this to signify everybody. I'm just saying there are people that are like this. But then, but then, there are also people who are in the exact opposite boat, who they're like, I actually do work hard. But the big thing is, is because I want hard, or because I work hard, I want fucking everything. And you're like everything define everything and they're like I want to be like Jeff Bezos rich and you have to say understand what you're saying is idiotic and completely uh, infeasible and unrealistic like like you it's obviously Jeff Bezos got Bezos rich Jeff Jeff Bezos, god damn it, got Jeff Bezos rich. rich. So it's not... <laughs> I know, I know, it's bad. It's not literally impossible, uh, but it is so profoundly fucking infeasible that it's just like, you, you need to sometimes say to people, like, that ain't you, man. Think about other shit. Yeah. That ain't ever gonna fucking happen. And that's the big, like, uh, I, don't, I hate to get too political, but... I'll try and be really careful and wear kid gloves. That is one of the things that I see with certain people's rhetorics when they're like, well, you know, so-and-so should be working harder because, like, I work hard to get what I get, and what I get isn't fucking as good as I feel that it should be, so so so-and-so should have to work just as hard as I do to have anything. That's fucking crazy. It's crazy that you think that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, anyways, before this gets too far gone, Evan, how do you, uh, how do you feel about moving on to our next pick? Yeah, I feel so, like, um, like, cathartic. Yeah, I know. This is <laughs> yeah, very like, relaxing, Yeah, it we? becomes very, not just relaxing, but it's really genuinely making our uh, diatribe sound fucking brilliant. Because yeah. it just, because it's, yeah, it sounds so great. It it's awesome. Good. I like it. Well, on with our next pick, as we like to say in the business that is this business, here and now. Okay, people, we're back. Um, Our last pick is kind of an interesting one. We're going to waste no time getting into it. The artist is The Caretaker. This album is An Empty Bliss Beyond This World, and we're starting with the song All You Are Going to Want to Do is Get Back There. Now... I have to say, this this is a, excuse me, a very fringe pick, and I was familiar with The Caretaker before this happened, and I know immediately people are going to hear this and go, what the fuck? This isn't, this isn't dark ambient at all. Why am I listening to this? Well, this is quite a long album, and you're definitely going to want to listen to the whole thing if you hear this and go... Man, that, that sounds very fascinating. I, I, I should immediately make a point to say that this album is different than The Caretaker's uh, big recognized album, which was, um, I believe, Everywhere at the End of Time. Indeed. Uh, however, I do believe... Yes, Everywhere at the End of Time. However, I do believe that it actually does follow the same concept and that was that they had made an album in the idea of like do you want to experience progressive dementia meaning do you want to listen to something that would make you feel like oh, I'm totally normal right now and then by the end of it you would be in the the furthest state gone of dementia experiencing the music that you had been listening to as if you were in late stage dementia to where you are actually no longer recognizing the world around you as it is. 
And I have to tell you, my partner and I did listen to uh, this this album that I'm referring to, which is Everywhere at the End of Time. We did listen to it in its entirety, and it is over six hours long. It is meant to be. It is meant to be listened to. Otherwise, in total silence, focusing on the music, so active listening for over six hours to fully grasp the experience, and it is a fucking trip. Like, granted, I understand that A, most people don't have that kind of time, and B, um, a lot of people beyond that, even if you do have the time, or if you don't, don't have the focus, totally understand on all of that, but if you have the time and the mental energy to get through it, I I strongly recommend it. Yeah. It I is mean, and, fantastic. And obviously, I feel like I feel like almost everyone knows someone or knows someone who knows someone who, who is affected by dementia and I mean that's a it's definitely like a um, it can be a very very painful thing to um, to think about for some people so you know if, if that kind of topic like makes someone uncomfortable not, yeah uncomfortable yeah and that's fine because yeah. it's obviously a, it's I probably a should have led with a trigger warning. very uh, devastating topic I mean it's like a slow 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 progressive death yeah my grandmother has dementia yeah well um, yeah. yeah and my my um, my wife's grandmother has dementia, quite quite bad dementia as well. Um, and you know, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, your wife's grandmother. I thought you were yeah. saying your wife's mother, and I was like, she does. No. Yes. Well, but um, I have a story when you're done. Well, uh, you know, I've never listened to uh, the caretaker before this, um, and yes, I I, I was uh, oh, okay. I was aware of of the the uh, massive. Um, uh, accolades and all the all the attention that was being uh, thrown towards um, the work. So, and trust me, uh, not to interrupt, but once you get towards the latter parts of the album or like midway to the latter, you'll go, "Oh, I get why this, they called this dark ambient because it gets it, it gets fucking disturbing and like totally intangible from the work as to what you're hearing now." So really, yeah, no, my big inclusion was like, we couldn't possibly feature this whole thing. Please listen to it on your own. Yeah, I almost feel like uh, this work, though, it has that, um, it it evokes like the the liminal space kind of thing, which yeah. I think is a very fascinating thing. Um, uh, Tell me about it, stud. Because yeah, like I, I it, yeah, there's some, something eerie and uh, intangible about um, about like the, these sounds, especially like the sound of piano that's been affected and put through some filters and well yeah it's uh, i feel like it's supposed to sound like it's being played through like a like a phonograph or something yeah and so it's it's honestly like it kind of gives you that sense of anguish or dread definitely um, and obviously I, I that's intentional <laughs> yes i highly doubt this is being played to feel beautiful or or like i make you feel good necessarily but it has that yeah. liminal feeling which is almost like that so nostalgic it hurts kind of feeling right. And um, and I think any artist who can um, who can really evoke that sense, uh, like kudos to you. That's that's amazing. That's a really um, really um, difficult skill to hone. I think. Definitely. Um, you know what that reminds me of? Oh fuck. Well, hey, I mean, we've only had two so far. Oh. I know. I know. Uh. uh. Uh, smooth but oh. still whiskey. Mm. Smooth but still whiskey. Mm. Indeed. Okay. Oh. Um, what did that actually make me think of, though? Oh, well, actually, two two big things. Um, one I'll make very quick, and the other one I'll get into, but I'm going to try and be careful getting into a uh, means of respect. Um... So firstly, uh, I think it could be really cool to potentially do an episode of the podcast or like just a video maybe, I don't fucking know, where we actually listen to the whole album. 
or the whole recorded piece of somewhere at the or everywhere at the end. God damn it. This is such a hard fucking thing everywhere to remember. At the end of time. Everywhere at the end of time, correct. Where we just like sit and we have our headphones on and we'll be like, alright, let's listen to this shit. And like actually film it so we can get like reactions. Cause I mean that's gonna be the biggest thing is like not so much talking through it, but just listening, experiencing, micro expressions, things like that. I think that could be fun. And then of course talking about it after the fact, that could be really, really cool. Cause that's not even just it's one thing to say like I'm reviewing an artist or I'm reviewing an album, but this is reviewing an experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. That could be cool. So we'll think. Uh, I I will think about that, and of course you can think about that um, in your own respective time. But I think that could be pretty cool. Of course, if people are like, I really want that, then great. Um, more reason to do it. That was the first thing. The second thing was, uh, I mean, you, you've met my grandmother. You know that she has dementia. You've met her, and you can clearly tell that she does have dementia. Oh boy, we're doing this again. All right, we'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, just some weird technical difficulties we're having. We're like, after a song or two, it'll just uh, stop playing. Like, if I get murdered, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Sorry, bro. I'm going to be fucking pissed. Let me take my ceremonial <laughs> dagger right here. <laughs> Wait, hang on, can I get the like cool knife sound real quick? Maybe I'll do it on the microphone. Like, Nice. Ah, yeah, anyways. Sick practical effects right there. I know you like that shit. Okay, cool. Anyways, um, so you know you've met my grandmother, you know that she has dementia. Mm-hmm. But while my mom, who actually is her legal caretaker, uh will proclaim like, you know, she's getting really far gone and this and that, whatever. And I mean I, I've certainly seen things to indicate that she is very confused about life at large like somebody will say you know where are you living and she'll say Oregon whereas we live in Washington say what year is it and she'll say like 1987 well that's uh, that's definitely far from the truth Um, etc etc overall she does seem to have pretty good spatial understanding like she has her own daily routine of like she'll go to check the mail she uh my mom has chickens so she'll go and let the chickens out and gather eggs and things like that and she's not only able to do that but she's able to do that without somebody like watching over her to make sure she's okay so like clearly to some degree she is doing okay but she does get frustrated with certain things that being said, um, I have a very first-hand experience on dementia otherwise in that, and I don't know if you knew this, but this will be fun to talk about. I've never talked about this publicly. Um, when I was a child, when I was a little baby boy, uh, living in Orange County, Florida, Sanford specifically, um, my parents... Well, we were we were going between a few houses before we actually moved to Washington State, and my dad's friend's mother actually owned somewhat of a, a mansion that you could say we were staying in for a little while, and um, there was a house outside of this mount, mansion, or not a house, more of like um, a hutch, that in which a an old man was living in and granted i was probably like three years old at this point so i remember very very little about all of this or three or four i don't know i was pretty fucking young um but my parents realized you know this man is like living in squalor he clearly has actually has dementia it's amazing that he's getting on through life and um, they decided uh, through the goodness of their heart to actually adopt this man so I don't know if you knew that that Mm -hmm. when I was growing up here in Washington State for many many years before I met you but not long before I met you uh, I grew up with Um, an elderly man, quite elderly, who had severe dementia. Hmm. And I won't, you know, give his full legal name for, like, again, reasons of respect, but we always called him Mr. Bob. His middle name was Robert, so we called him, you know, Mr. Bob. 
And it was always fascinating to me to like wake up and go out um, and, you know, like try to have a conversation with him or just listen. Because he would sit at like the end of our kitchen table virtually all day. Like he had a walker, he would wake up, he would come out, he would sit at the table, he'd ask my mom who he called mama. Uh, he'd ask her for some coffee and he'd just drink, you know, two, three, four cups of coffee. And he'd just sit there all day until it's like, well, it's bedtime. And then he would go to bed. Um, other than going to the bathroom a couple of times, which, you know, being at that age, he needed some amount of help with. Um, and uh, it was just fascinating to, like, talk with him or sit there and listen to him, you know, talk about the the older days and stuff and he never he never remembered me like as long as i can remember my whole life he had no idea who i was i was just a figment that occasionally popped in and out me and my brother um he would call my dad daddy sometimes and my mom mama and he remembered our dog uh chelsea but other than that, like, we were all just, like, figments that would come in and out. And, man, I could tell some fucking stories. But I won't. Because, again, it's it's about respect. Um, like I said, I grew up with this, this man. Um, definitely, he was very dear to my family's heart. Um, so, I, you know, I won't tell, like, oh, man, these wild dementia stories. Because it's, that's, nobody needs that shit. Um... But yeah, for what it's worth, when people talk about dementia and think, you know, like, um, um, well, do you ever, have you ever really known somebody to be that in it? I literally lived it. And he lived with us um, from pretty far into dementia till the day he died. Um, so I, yeah, I've definitely myself seen, excuse me, seen some pretty intense dementia oh yeah yep holy shit what a response oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah I um oh that got everywhere holy shit <laughs> holy shit is right I slammed my water bottle down not even thinking about it and I just sprayed everywhere like on the someone's back <laughs> I just stopped myself from saying anything worse well it's it's tough, you know. We never um, we'd never ever want to believe that our minds are so vulnerable that that in our most lucid Absolutely. times here in our youth that we're so sprightly and young and, and eager to meet the world, but that at some point in our lives we might just have the hardest time even remembering that somebody exists and, and you're meeting yeah. them for the first time every time or you that see they're them. gone for that matter because that was one that broke my heart all the time was him talking about his family about mm -hmm. his son mm -hmm. about his parents and everything about as if they were like as if they were there they were fucking sitting at the table with him and he doesn't know like they've been gone for decades yeah they're they're definitely not there but they're sure as shit not talking to him yeah it was tough so we gotta, we gotta. Um, I think the, the big thing is to just like, you know, it's like you gotta be, be humble and realize that like, that anyone is susceptible to this and yeah, uh, totally. And that, um, that yeah, even though you never want to think that that uh, you could eventually find yourself like that, you know, we can only hope that we have people who love us and want to take care of us when that, when uh, when that does sort of become our, yeah. our um, our life. So. Yeah, and it, it's fascinating to me to see my grandmother and know that she's obviously not doing well. And that's the thing is, you know, God bless her. Like, my mom gets frustrated a lot, and I understand because dementia is frustrating. But the big thing, like, with, with my grandmother that I, I try to have as much empathy as possible. Because clearly, I, I mean, not clearly, but I don't have dementia, but I understand enough about it to know that it is a very frustrating, hard thing to go through. So, you know, just trying to say, well, you know, they probably didn't mean that, or, um, you know, obviously they're they're upset because they're having a bad time and this and that, whatever. Um, this is typically how I, you know, try to think about it and. Um, justify everything. Oh boy, again with this. Hang on, BRB. Okay, and we're back. Um, that one was actually moderately more annoying than the last. I just really, really didn't want to load. 
Anywho, I try to have empathy. That's my point. I have water all over me. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I feel like at this point you can hear it's like very, very subtly becoming less immediately recognizable. But anywho. Um Wow, yeah, dude, that was that was actually kinda like cathartic to open up about the time of my life that I've never really like um gotten into much. Check this out. That's fucking sick, dude. On a totally on like other side of the fucking world, dude. Evans fucking standing his phone up straight, dude. I think I'm a fucking X Man. Table. I think you're probably an X Man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Sorry, I need to stop saying fucking crazy. I'm trying. We all should try. Anyways, people, I think uh, you know. I think that about dang diddly does it, Evan. How do you feel? Oh shit! My phone fucking fell. Um, God damn it! Yeah, this needs to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you mean like we need to end the podcast, or like a blip no. the brain? Pretty old, just like the, first cancel the podcast and end, yeah. end it immediately. Hashtag cancel us. Um, yeah. No. Um, you know, I think I, I feel comfortable with wrapping up. Hell yeah. You know, it's funny, on our drinking episodes, I feel like we're always between... We're, it's always like three shots or five shots. We had three shots... Three shots? Do we have three or four? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, th yeah, three, including... Uh, three, including... Um, the very first initial one. one. Yeah, Oof. I think that's correct. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, you know, this was, this was a good coming back to Earth, as it were. Uh, I'm glad to be doing this shit again. I hope you're glad to be hearing it. And with that, three things to end on. If you borrow your friend's vinyl record of... Which which one was that? Yes. Yes, going for the one. Yes, going for the one. It's cool to spin it. Please don't eat it. Um, they are a delicacy. They are a delicacy. If you buy Stouffer's French bread pizzas from the grocery store, it's okay to buy six, but not anymore. <laughs> if you buy any more, it's considered a problem. Not, it's not me saying that, legally speaking. I mean, if you're going to uh, buy more, at least go in separate trips or have maybe a family member buy more. Yeah. Because, I mean, you definitely don't want the embarrassment of one of the cashiers, like, seeing you buy so many of them. Definitely. And sword swallowing is a noble profession, but knife swallowing isn't impressing anybody. Yeah, what the fuck? Seriously. Yeah. Don't even try it. Uh, don't drink and drive. Don't smoke meth. And we will see you in a week. We'll see you in exactly a week from right now. Love you. Love you more than your stepdad did. And that's saying something because he was a pretty cool guy, unless he wasn't. And then fuck that guy. 